recording. So my name is Pam Scamardo. I'm your host for the Create Wealth Network. And today I'm excited that we will be presenting or learning more about title and escrow. So the title of, is Navigating Title and Escrow. And one of the things when I first started in multifamily investing, I did not know anything about title and escrow. And I always thought that that was something I could worry about at the end. Turns out that's not really the case. You want to get a good team on board with you when you're starting off right away. So with that in mind, I'm excited to have Shauna Smith and Suzanne Kennedy here to present. Not a problem. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for that introduction, Pam. Um, I'm going to dive right into basically Title 101. What is title insurance and kind of why do you need it? And what are you looking at when you get that thing called a prelim? Um, bear with me here because I no matter how many of these I do, I'm still technologically challenged. So uh, bring this up on the screen for you guys there. Can everybody see that? Good, okay. So health insurance, car insurance, all these things that you purchase throughout life because you might need them one day you don't need them right now, but they protect you against things when they arise. Title is kind of like one of those things. The definition of title insurance is that it assures the rights and the interests of the pro to the property are valid and that the owner of the property is protected against financial loss that can come from defects in title liens and or other matters. So this essentially protects you and ensures that you are the rightful owner of your property when you purchase it, that anything that is attached to the property is something that you acknowledge and that you're aware of. There is no prior liens, debt, um, any type of judgments, things like that from a prior owner attached. Uh, basically that what you own is free and clear of anything that was there previously that could affect you now. The first step in obtaining title insurance, just like whenever you purchase something that somebody else has previously owned, is taking a look at what is attached to that property. It's like getting into a relationship and seeing everybody's baggage. You want to know what you're taking on as you get into it and before you get too far down the road. When you order a title report or when you go under contract with an escrow company, and you're getting ready to purchase a property, somebody should provide you with something called a prelim or a title commitment, depending on where you're purchasing your property and what jurisdiction it's in. Some states, not always California, prefer to issue what's called a title commitment. Some states are okay issuing title reports. They both essentially say the same thing, but a title commitment just has a little bit more wording in and is committing to issuing a title insurance policy at the end of a closing. Title reports, or basically like a Carfax for the property that you're buying. It's showing you everything that affects it, everything that's gone on over the years that's still attached. Um, it will reference, again, any type of liens or encumbrances against the property, anything that you need to know about before you decide, hey, I wanna give you my money, I wanna make this mine. The title report is structured in three sections essentially. Schedule A will show you who the vested owner is on the property. This name should match who you go under contract with. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, that's not always somebody being dishonest, but it could be, sorry, something popped up on the screen there. It could be somebody transferred title into a different entity. It could be that somebody's passed away. There could be an owner on title that nobody was aware of still. Somebody thought they owned 100% of the property and it turns out that, you know, Uncle Joe was a trustee and also got 20% of the property when somebody passed away kind of thing. So essentially, when you look at your report, your Schedule A will show you who is the owner. And if that is not the person that you are under contract with, it's kind of your first red flag and it's something that you bring up to your title and escrow team. The second portion of Schedule A will be the legal description. This will reference the property that you are under contract to buy or the property that you're looking at taking on. Um, it will include the full actual meets and bounds legal or the parcel description that is referenced through the county, along with your assessor's parcel number. It will look different depending on what county you're in and what state you're in every time. 
but it should be all of the property that's covered under your purchase agreement if you're under contract. That is another thing that is a really big red flag to look out for is when you get your title report. If all of the property is not covered or if too much property is covered, it's something that needs to be brought up to title and escrow right away. Um, the last thing you would want is to assume that you're getting parcels one, two, and three, and you only take on, you know, parcels one and two, or you're under contract to buy parcels one and two, but one, two, and three are included and property gets transferred un unintentionally. The second part of that report that you're going to get is schedule B. And again, B is for baggage. All of the baggage, all of the things that are attached to the property will be referenced in schedule B. It's going to show you any taxes, any tax liens, um, any CCNRs, any parking easements, any type of easements in general, uh, any liens, deeds of trust, judgments, anything that affects the property and actually attaches to the land will be referenced in that section. Any questions so far? I believe there is a question that was typed in the chat. Um, they were wondering if all of this is part of the closing cost or how is it all, I guess, how is it all split up in regards to the fees and the structure? So depending on what state you're in, um, it will kind of vary. California is what's called an all-inclusive state. So if you are under contract to buy a property, you get your title report, you're, under, you're in escrow, the title report costs with a couple nuances are included in the title insurance premium that you pay for your policy. If it's in a different state and depending on how that state runs their searches, whether it's back East and it goes through an attorney or a, um, somebody has to physically go to the County to search for these records, different search costs, copy costs, anything like that are allocated. Um, and often split between buyer and seller or designated to one side or the other during an escrow. California is a state where unless it's some intense search with 30 parcels included and it takes, you know, an extended amount of time, uh, there shouldn't be any search costs associated with the actual prelim. The costs are rolled into your title insurance premium. Hopefully that answers that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so again, Schedule B is where you're going to look at all of the items that are attached to the property. These are also going to be where you either say, hey, I don't like that. We need to do something to fix it, whether it's an easement that you don't think should be there. It's an old easement, an old lease that needs to be terminated, anything like that. This is where you can say, hey, I don't want to buy this property and take it subject to these items. Things that are usually taken out because they're paid off through escrow, things like liens and taxes and deeds of trust, um, judgments that are released, anything like that are also items that are going to be referenced there. But this is where you get a list, basically like a Carfax report, everything that is attached to your property to this point in time. The last section of your report will cover all of the requirements that title and escrow will require in order to close the transaction and insure the property. So a lot of times if you're coming in as a buyer, you won't have many requirements listed there, but it's still a good idea to read that section because some of those items will also be required from you at some point. Um, one of the major ones that's always listed is entity documentation. So in the future, if you're selling this property, uh, it'll be something that's required from you. We do require buyers entity documents on our closings as well just because we need to verify signatures. Entity documents are things like LLC agreements, um, partnership agreements, trust documents, anything that references who is allowed to bind the entity and either uh, dispose of the property or purchase the property. Um, anybody who can legally sign on behalf of that group. It will also reference anything that needs to be reconveyed. So if there's deeds of trust showing, if there are liens on the property, um, anything like that that will need to be released unless we're instructed otherwise will be referenced there. There should be a copy of what's called an owner's declaration. And as a seller, that is something that you would fill out stating your knowledge of what's going on on the property. Are there any active leases on the property? If it's multifamily, obviously. 
there's going to be leases. Um, you would attach a rent roll, items like that. Uh, is there any ongoing construction on the property? Because that's something that everybody needs to be aware of. Um, basically, your knowledge of what's happening on the property if you're going to be selling. It will reference any requirements for ALTA surveys or survey affidavits. Uh, that will vary depending on what state you're in. Um, I'm not sure if everybody on this call is buying locally, if they're looking to invest out of state, but the requirements section is often disregarded when people are looking at their commitments. Um, and it's probably one of the more important sections, especially if you get outside of California. That requirement section is gonna show you everything that needs to be provided to title and escrow. Any type of specific reports that need to be requested from the county, um, any type of timelines that those need to be requested in, that will be all be referenced in that portion of your title report or title commitment. Any other questions? I can't see when the chat box pops up. So Pam, if you could let me know. Sure thing, no problem. Thank you. Okay, so you've gotten your title report, you've reviewed it, you've said, hey, I am okay with all of these items being shown. I'm okay with, we're not taking it subject to that deed of trust or those taxes, those are all being paid by the seller through escrow. I'm fine with it. This is where you're going to request your title policy. There are two different types of policies that can be requested and different requirements for each, obviously. The acronyms that are used to refer to these coverages are CLTA and ALTA often. And what those basically stand for are California Land Title Association and American Land Title Association. But people often use those and they're interchangeable with standard and extended coverage. For the most part, people will um, request a standard coverage owner's policy which ensures that you are the rightful owner of the property now, that it is free and clear of encumbrances, that everything's been paid, and this is what you're taking it subject to. Uh, there aren't any type of survey requirements for those. There is, it's basically your standard insurance policy. There is a list of standard exceptions that are added in there about, um, you know, you're not covered for off record matters. You're not covered for items that would otherwise be disclosed by a survey, things like that. Um, if you would like coverage for items like that, that is when you request an extended coverage owner's policy. Um, and in order to issue an extended coverage, which the difference there is, again, you're being covered for off record matters. So off record easements that are only disclosed by a survey. Um, any type of additional coverage for CCNRs, for encroachments and forced removal of improvements, um, access issues, anything like that, anything that requires additional coverage that's not automatically assumed when you get a standard coverage owner's policy is what is purchased when you're purchasing an extended coverage policy. Uh, again, ALTA versus CLTA endorsements. CLTA endorsements and ALTA endorsements are often interchangeable. They have similar forms and similar, they accomplish almost exactly the same things in certain instances. It's just CLTA is available in California, not outside California. The ALTA, ALTA equivalent to those endorsements and those coverages are available nationwide for the most part. There are a few states such as Texas, Oregon, Florida, and a few others that have their own type of local endorsements, similar to CLTA um, and ALTA. But for the most part, ALTA is nationwide. CLTA is coverage that's available in California. Any questions so far? I know this is all very riveting and I'm sure everybody is very awake and on the edge of their seats. You're doing great. <laughs> um, and then just a quick overview of what you're engaging when you engage an escrow company. It's similar to when you purchase a house. Um, there's different forms, obviously, residential versus commercial. Uh, but this is your escrow team is who provides your settlement statement. We'll pay off all of the debt and taxes and any of those items that are showing for the seller. They're who take in your earnest money deposit. 
and who interface with people like your exchange company and your brokers and they pay your brokers commissions they handle the money and the exchanges between you and the seller throughout the process and then essentially close and disperse all proceeds at the end throughout your transaction i know i just mentioned exchanges and i think my friend suzanne can kind of speak and give you a brief overview of what those are if you don't know but um at chicago title we are lucky enough to have a great network of ancillary services available to us and companies that we work very closely with so um the first one is ips which is our 1031 exchange company and Suzanne is kind of our in-house exchange expert. So I'll let her explain briefly what that is. And then if you would like to join us for our next conversation, we will actually have IPX doing your presentation on um, all the different types of exchange work. But Suzanne. Great, thanks Shauna. Um, just in, in case you're not familiar with what a 1031 exchange is, that is um, a program that is available when an investor or a business owner is looking to sell an investment property and exchange it for a new property. And by doing so and completing the exchange within the time frame and you know all, following all the rules, um, they are able to defer their capital gains tax. And you know the best way to think of that is jump through a few hoops and you're able to reinvest your gain rather than having to pay taxes. And we have a great team at IPX that will walk you through um, all of the steps, make sure you don't miss any of your deadlines and you're very um, you know, comfortable with the process and what's happening. But it's a great program. Um, you know, it's, it's available to anyone. You can defer any amount of money. So you could defer $100,000 or $100 million. And you can buy property anywhere in the United States. Um, you can also sell one and buy multiple properties to diversify, or if you wanted to sell five and buy one, um, you can do that as well. So it's, it's a great program. If you're not familiar with exchanges, please be sure to jump on our next uh, webinar so that you can learn more about that and really take advantage of that opportunity. Awesome, thank you, Suzanne. Um, a couple more ancillary services that are available to us at Chicago Title, we offer obviously Disclosure Source, which it's not as often on multifamily projects, but a lot of times on retail and commercial, other commercial projects, you will need to order what's called an NHD report or environmental reports. For instance, if something like a uh, dry cleaner has been on the premises, uh, our, we have a UCC division. So if there are UCCs filed against the property and you need to do UCC searches or for some reason you need a UCC policy in the future. We also have a division for that. Um, and then we also have a national property inspection service that we can um, employ if you guys request it. And that is it, guys. Thank you so much. I know it was a quick overview. If you have any questions, feel free to ask now or send myself or Suzanne an email. Um, I'd be happy to talk more in depth on any of the topics that we covered.